The latissimus dorsi are going to be muscles that help to move the arm. And these now are going to be found on the posterior side of the body. These will be superficial muscles that are going to be broad and triangular shaped, and they will be on the inferior part of our back. These are commonly known as our lats. And also these are referred to as our swimmer's muscle because we many of the actions are required for swimming strokes. So the, this muscle is the prime arm extensor, but it also helps with adduction and medial rotation of the arm. Our pectoralis major muscles are commonly referred to as our pecs. These are going to be superficial muscles that we find on the anterior side of the thoracic cavity that are large, thick, and fan-shaped muscles. These will cover the superior part of the thorax and the prime movement for this is flexion of the arm, but it also plays a role with adduction and medial rotation of the arm. And so with flexion, it will be an antagonist of the latissimus dorsi, but it will be synergistic in regards to arm adduction with the latissimus dorsi. The deltoids will be muscles that we find are on the superficial surface and it gives the round, rounded contour of our shoulder. So this muscle is very thick and powerful that we see both on the anterior and posterior sides. The main function, it will be a prime abductor of the arm where though the different fibers will have a different action. So on the anterior surface, these fibers will help with flexion and medial rotation of the arm. The middle fibers here that I'm circling, these will be for the prime abduction of the arm. And then on the posterior most fibers, these are going to be for extension and the lateral rotation of the arm. The coracobrachialis is a very deep muscle that works as a synergist to the pectoralis major for flexion and adduction of the arm. It gets its name from the attachment at the coracoid process of the scapula and within the brachial region or within the humerus. The teres major is a deep muscle that will have the action of extension, adduction, and medial rotation of the arm. So it will be a synergistic muscle to the latissimus dorsi. So you'll notice that we have a major and a minor. The only difference here is the size of the muscle. Anytime we see a muscle that's a major muscle means that it's going to be larger in size compared to that of the minor muscle, which will be smaller in size. The rotator cuff muscles are a set of four muscles that help to provide strength and stability for the glenerohumeral humoral joint. So the first one, the subscapularis, which is the only muscle that we find on the anterior side for the rotator cuff muscles, are going to be in that in entire, entire fossa of the scapula. And so this is important because this is the muscle that is for medial rotation of the arm. So for example, in this picture, when a batter goes to, or when a pitcher goes to wind up for a pitch, the subscapularis is the one that is being contracting. Then what we have is the supraspinatus, which is going to be above the spine of the scapula. So we find this on the posterior side. This is when we have full abduction of the arm. And so when you start to execute the pitch, so like in this example, and then the infraspinatus, which is going to be below the spine of the scapula and on the posterior side, helps with the adduction and lateral rotation of the arm, as well as the teres minor, so has the same action as that of the infraspinatus.